this is Ananya. In the last lecture, we finished with conditional statements in Python. And in today's lecture, we'll be starting with loops in Python. So today's subtopic will be for loops. So let's see what we have in store. So what do you think loops actually mean? Well, loops are something wherein you execute a certain code inside a given amount of time or a given amount or a certain range okay now what do you mean by certain amount of time that is you have maybe some a condition until it that condition becomes false you will keep executing the same code again and again and uh, if you have a certain range within which you want to execute the code that also is a part of the loop definition okay so today we'll be understanding what for loop is and uh, every each topic will be a new lecture so let's get started with for loop now a uh, for loop is basically again you have the for word here and a certain condition and the colon and inside that colon you ha uh, you have your code being executed so basically you have for some condition and the code inside it so until this condition becomes false the code inside the for loop will keep getting executed or else you can also have your syntax for the for loop as for some variable in a certain range okay now what do you think a range might exactly mean well range is an inbuilt function in python what range does is it gives you can input a certain starting value and an end value and till this variable is inside this range the code keeps getting executed now let us understand the range function before proceeding see the range function returns a sequence of numbers okay now this is inbuilt that by default if you do not provide any number the range function will start from 0 and it will keep getting incremented by 1 so if you have if you haven't given a starting point it will start from 0 and then it will go on by 1 2 3 4 and so on but you must remember that it is compulsory for you to give an ending value because the range function needs to know where you have to stop the starting and incrementing it can take care of if you haven't specified but the ending number must be provided by you so this is the syntax of the range function so you have range and in parenthesis you have start stop and step start is your beginning number stop is your ending number which is a comp which is compulsory and step is by how much you want to increment it okay start and step is optional and uh, sorry start and step is optional and stop is compulsory now let us take an example you have a variable x and to that you are assigning the range function which says 2 comma 6 now 2 denotes start and 6 denotes stop so here we have provided a starting number so it will start from 2 so you have 2 3 4 and 5 now you might wonder that we have given 6 so why is it stopping at 5 well the range function is such that you need to provide the exact next number where you want it to stop so I want the range function to stop at 5 and hence I'll provide a greater number the exact greater number to 5 that is 6 okay let's take another example uh, I have the function range which starts at 3 ends at 21 and it has a step count of 2 that is I do not want it incrementing by 1 but I want it incrementing by 2 so we have 3 then 5 7 9 11 and so on the difference will be maintained as 2 and it stops at 21 
okay why because we have this step count 2 here all right let's go ahead now so we saw the syntax for the for loop okay and uh, let's have an example now so we have for i now i is a variable here if the if you can match the syntax for i in range 3 comma 21 okay so starts at 3 ends at 21 and step count is by default 1 since we haven't mentioned it and I wanted to print each number okay so that we say print x so you can see the output here you get the numbers from 3 up to 20 simple now let's go ahead let's solve uh, for uh, examples now practical examples then it will help us a lot in understanding what the for loop exactly does so our first example will be printing a pattern now what the pattern says is you have one if you if the number is one it gets the number one gets printed once if the number is two it gets printed twice if three then thrice and so on so you have one two two three 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 four 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 and so on okay let's let's run this let's write the code okay let as usual we create a new file okay let's name it for loop dot py hit enter okay now let us uh, input the limit from the user that is uh, till what number does the user want to print let's say if the user wants to print up till 5 or up till 6 we'll take that input first so int input of enter the limit okay now what we do is we say for i in range of 1 comma limit plus 1 now let us understand this first we we will start from 1 why because we don't want to print a uh, 0 in the pattern so we start from 1 and then we have limit plus 1 so if the user gives 5 I have to print it up I have to give the range as 6 because as I previously mentioned you always have to give a number more than what the actual limit is needed okay so if we have 1 comma 6 it will print the pattern up to the number 5 and now we say print str of i into i now let's understand this also what is the meaning of str of i str basically stands for string it's an abbreviated form of the word string so string of i into i so what it is basically doing is why should we typecast it to string because if I do if I simply do i into i that will be maybe 2 into 2 it will only give us 4 that is no way close to what we want so string of i will be something like let's take 2 okay string of for example i is 2 we take 2 into 2 so string of 2 basically concatenates it the number of times the value of i so string of 2 into 2 will give you 2 2 which is exactly what we want again if we do print str of 3 into 3 3 into 3 will result into the it being printed thrice so this i basically tells the compiler how many times you want to print the string okay 
and uh, now you got it now i keeps on incrementing till it reaches 6 and accordingly the print statement keeps on getting executed let's run this let's give the number 5 see you have 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 times 4 and 5 times 5 okay I hope you all got this example now let's go ahead with the next example this also again is a pattern sort of code see what we have to do is this is similar to it's like half of the code is same we just replace the numbers with stars okay with the asterisk sign so we have the same pattern till the fifth row but after that what we want to do is we want to keep decremented decrementing it till it reaches one so you basically print a triangle okay now let's try and do this it's pretty simple I it'll be really helpful for y'all if y'all go ahead and first try this by yourself y'all can just pause the video and uh, try it out okay so uh, let us uh, comment this now let's just keep it hard coded for now y'all can uh, do your own y'all can take the input from the user and uh, make it a little more interesting and complicated and try it out okay so we say for i in range I want to print it up to 5 okay I want the stars going from 1 to 5 and then 4 3 2 1 so my what will my range be for i in range 1 comma 6 right we say print now what we were doing here previously we were doing string of i into i this time we do not want a number hence we'll just print the asterisk sign so we say print asterisk and then we say into i okay let me just run this for you all and uh, show it so it becomes clear what is happening see you have one two three four five asterisk signs printed now we need to go the opposite direction so what do we do for that pretty simple but you all will look at a new range uh, uh, example here it will help you all understand better so let's take for j in range now what I wanted to do is I wanted to start from 4 so what we say is from range 5 comma 0 comma minus 1 now see what's happening for j in range 5 0 and minus 1 we wanted to start from 5 end just before 0 that is at 1 and the step count will be minus 1 why minus 1 because I wanted to go on decrementing and not incrementing okay and we say print star into j okay this should give us the expected result see let me just enlarge in this see you have the first half of the code and then you have the second half okay we have five uh, we have five stars being printing printed twice I guess I put the number as five here yes I'll just make it four okay now let's run it see you have 1 to 5 and then you have 4 3 2 1 okay this is a new example that you saw for uh, according to the range function okay so we finish the first two examples next let's just go ahead with the next one so the next example says that I want to count the digits the number of digits and characters in a string 
so for example this is the string inputted by the user that is python 3.7.2 the digit count should be 3 since you have 3 and 7 and 2 and python gives us 6 characters hence the character count should be 6 now you all might wonder how to go about this so let me just tell you we'll be using a bit of inbuilt functions here so that uh, may, maybe next uh, in the next session that is after we finish loops we'll be doing uh, functions we'll be learning functions all right so uh, the two functions that we'll be using is is digit and is alpha okay if you all have uh, seen or if you all know about operators you all might understand uh, why you all might have an idea as to why we are you having uh, is digit and is alpha is is basically an operator and he hence it checks if the character in the string is a digit or an a character okay so let's take the input as we have to take a string so no type casting or anything just simply take a string enter an alpha numeric alpha numeric string okay now we say that the variables let us take two variables they will basically act as counters digit is equal to characters is equal to zero we have to initialize them as zero because if you increment them they will just be some random value now for i in input that is input is basically the string so i want it to go on sequentially uh, checking each character in the string so I will uh, act as the characters in our input string now we'll check if I dot is digit so we are check we are checking if I is a digit or not so if it is a digit we say we increment digit the counter digit that we have we increment it digit plus is equal to one again if you are confused as to what is digit plus is equal to one you'll you all can just go and check the operators lecture that i have so this is basically in incrementing it okay now elif i is alpha that is if it is a character it basically checks both a uh, small like uppercase and lowercase letters we increment the character counter okay else we just say pass now you might or might not know what is the pass keyword about well it just for now just understand that uh, it tells the code to just continue normally basically pass is equal to don't do anything just go ahead okay we'll be understanding loop control statements in a couple of uh, lectures all right now let's print it okay uh, let's say a uh, print number of letters we give the comma operator and print ch then print number of digits and we say digit ok let's run this let's take the same example we are taken in the slide we'll take python 3.7.2 okay hit enter there you go you have number of letters as 6 and number of digits as 3 
okay now if you observe the space and this dot operators are not not operator the full the dot and the space are not getting counted it is basically just skipping it because it doesn't fall in any of the conditions is is digit or is, is alpha now inst if for example if i want to count the space and the dots also i'll just simply say instead of pass i will say uh extra is plus is equal to 1 okay any extra characters which are not letters okay and i will also initialize this to 0 Le so and let's print it also. So we should be getting one, two, three, right? So number of uh, characters. Let's see what we get. Python three point seven point two. See, you get number of characters as three. Why? Because you have a space and these two dots. All right. We understood for loop pretty well. Let's look at the last example. We'll be calculating uh, the factorial of a given number. Okay, we all know what a factorial is. We just simply keep counting till you reach one. So, for example, factorial of of five is one twenty. Now let's look at it. Again, I'll be just hard coding it because it just speeds up the process. Uh, Y'all can. It's it's very uh, efficient and highly recommended that you do not make hard coded uh, programs. It is a it's a very good practice to take in uh, user inputs. Okay. Uh, for now, I'll just be doing hard coded because it it won't waste your time. Let's say if uh, the variable fact is equal to one. Now, why am I uh initializing fact to 1 i'll come back and explain it later on let me just finish the code now for i in range again if you want to just pause this video and solve solve this by yourself it will be absolutely great so please go ahead and do so or at, at least if you would just want to take a pen and paper and uh, just try out the basic logic behind it no problem okay and now i'll say print fact okay now let's understand what is happening i'm taking for i in range 1, 6 that is why 1 comma 6 because i want the factorial of 5 so it should stop at 5 and fact is equal to 1 so now you understand because if i would have taken it at 0 my answer would have been 0 because multiplication is going on so fact is equal to 1 so what i do is fact that is 1 into the value of i what is the value of i in the beginning that is 1 so 1 into 1 Gets stored into a factorial, which is one. Okay. Now in the in the next iteration, we have i is equal to two. Now previously fact is equal to one, so one into two. So the value two gets stored into variable fact. Next i is equal to three. So now what it does is fact is equal to two into three. That is six. Get now gets stored into fact. Okay. That's how it goes on. Let's run this. See, you have the answers one twenty. Okay, you all can try try out various numbers, make it user friendly. All right. So this is all for uh, the for loop uh, lecture. We understood about for loops today. 
uh, next we'll be learning what while loop is okay practice check out more problem statements and keep practicing you'll get really good at it all right bye bye see you soon